So, grossly speaking, the pituitary gland is that dangly jobby that sits beneath the hypothalamus at the base of the brain. Remember what that part of the skull is called? The one with the pituitary inside? It's called the cella tersica, or the Turkish saddle. No idea why they thought the base of the skull looked Turkish. Anyway, what looks like Mexico with a pair of testicles is actually my attempt at a schematic diagram of the hypothalamus and pituitary, divided up into the functionally distinct anterior and posterior pituitaries. There's the intermediate lobe, which you really don't have to know anything about for step one, except that it produces melanotropin, which stimulates melanocytes to make you darker. Now, the cool thing is that, much like the adrenal gland, this gland is diverse in its embryologic origin. Remember that buzzword that's always associated with the anterior pituitary's embryology? Rathke's pouch? It's derived from surface ectoderm by a process that you don't actually have to be familiar with, but simply knowing the name Rathke's pouch equals easy points on step one. Now this is sort of your gland portion, like the adrenal cortex. So where does the posterior pituitary come from? Hint, it's in the alternate name for the posterior pituitary, the neurohypophysis. Basically, like the adrenal medulla, the posterior pituitary is of neurologic origin. In this case, neuroectoderm, and not neural crest, because we're in the central nervous system. Remember your embryology. Neuroectoderm equals CNS, and neural crest equals PNS, generally speaking. So, the blood supply here is particularly interesting, because it's home to the second, and far less famous, portal venous system, the hypophyseal portal system. And like the more famous hepatic portal system, it's present to ensure that the products of the first capillary bed are routed straight into another capillary bed, before they have the chance to hit the systemic circulation. In this case, the hypothalamus secretes trophic hormones through the circulation that control the release of six hormones from the anterior pituitary. We'll talk a lot more about these feedback loops in the physiology section, but by and large, they're pretty intuitive. So, how does the hypothalamus control the secretion of hormones from the posterior pituitary? All right, you can relax, that wasn't really a fair question, because the posterior pituitary is actually just made up of axonal projections from the neurons in the hypothalamus. So there's no trophic hormones traveling through the portal system, like there is for the anterior pituitary. The hormones are simply generated in the cell bodies in the hypothalamus, and are escorted down the axon by chaperone proteins called neurophysins, and then get released by the modified axon terminals specialized to release hormones into the bloodstream instead of into a synapse or a neuromuscular junction. Pretty cool, huh? There are six hormones total that are produced by the anterior pituitary. Think you can name them all? Go ahead and pause the video. I'm not going anywhere. So, the hormones are FSH, LH, ACTH, TSH, prolactin, and growth hormone. And these hormones conveniently form the mnemonic flat pig. No, no, not a fat pig, a flat pig. Ah, cute, look, he's standing on the first aid sign. <laughs> anyway, um, cells of the pituitary gland are histologically divided up into basophils and acidophils, based on how they stain. Basophils staining either blue or purple, depending on the stain, and acidophils staining a bright or red. The flat hormones of the flat pig series are produced by basophils and the pig hormones are produced by acidophils. Now, I want to clear up one bit of confusion about acidophils and basophils. These are not two different cell types. Those are just descriptions of how they stain. The five different cell types secrete six different pituitary hormones, and it just so happens that the corticotrophs, gonadotrophs, and thyrotrophs all take up base and stain blue, so we call them basophils. Similarly, both lactotrophs and somatotrophs take up acids and stain red, so we call them acidophils. You got me? Finally, three of the flat hormones, which are secreted by the basophils, actually look pretty similar. FSH, LH, and TSH all have the same alpha subunit. It's the beta subunit, however, that gives these hormones their specificity. Interestingly enough, this structure is also shared by another non-pituitary hormone. Remember what it is? It's human chorionic gonadotropin, a hormone similar to FSH and LH in that it promotes the secretion of progesterone. In large enough doses, HCG's alpha subunit can even trick the body into thinking that it is TSH, which can actually cause the symptoms of hyperthyroidism. You can see this in patients with HCG-secreting neoplasms, like gonadal tumors or hydatiform moles. Adrenocorticotropic hormone is the odd man out amongst the basophils. It's synthesized from a large protein precursor called pro-opio-melanocortin. Uh, and if you're thinking, wow, that's a mouthful, how am I ever going to remember that? Just remember that this precursor molecule allows you to synthesize not just one, but three other hormones. The opio stands for the body's endogenous opioid, or beta-endorphin, 
The melano stands for melanocyte stimulating hormone, promoting the synthesis of melanin in the skin. And cortin, of course, stands for everyone's favorite ACTH. What happens is the precursor molecule that's generated gets cut up into three pieces, generating all three hormones. Beta endorphin release is controlled pretty tightly, but MSH levels in the blood tend to rise when ACTH levels do. That's why, in conditions where ACTH goes through the roof, like Addison's disease, the skin tends to darken, because of increased MSH. Alright friends, time to see what you guys learned with another Flash Quiz. We talked a lot about hormones today, now let's see if you can name the hormones secreted by acidophilic cells. Pause the video if you need some time to think. The answer is prolactin and growth hormone, otherwise known as somatotropin. As a refresher, the anterior pituitary hormones are flat pig. FSH, LH, ACTH, and TSH are all secreted by basophils, whereas prolactin and growth hormone are secreted by acidophils. Now, let's go back to our friend the posterior pituitary, just to see if you were listening the first time. Where are these hormones produced? The answer is the hypothalamus. Now, there's two hormones that are produced here, so it's not quite as crazy as the anterior pituitary. Vasopressin is produced in the supraoptic nuclei of the hypothalamus, and oxytocin is produced in the paraventricular nuclei. My mnemonic, and I have no idea why nobody's thought of this before, is VSOP. For those of you who don't know, it's a grade of cognac that means my drink is better than yours. So think about that posterior pituitary next time you pass the couvoisier.